Hey, it's Neptune, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. It is currently the day of the festival. Something is going to happen, and I know it's going to happen. Something has to happen soon. Something terrible is going to happen. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Siori. But Siori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gingerly roll it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Yuri and Yuri at the festival. Damn, I'm playing everyone. <laughs> On accident. I don't know, man. I don't know, after last episode, I don't know. Oh my god. Dude, I don't even know what to think of this game anymore. <laughs> but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Will it? Mommy! You're the first one here! Thanks for being early! That's funny! I thought at least Yuri would be here by now! Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems were prepared. I just okay brain aneurysms that were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. Am I simping over her? What the fuck? I don't know. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. Did I just forget everything? Oh, I was, I was just gonna say, I was like, what the fuck? I say that, but I suddenly remember what Siri told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing that I'm a piece of shit. I mean, knowing it's not really that simple for her. Nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gotten to wake her up after all. Ah! <laughs> You should take a little responsibility for her, Mommy. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do! Yuri was hiding in the bushes with a camera! I'm the club president, after all! But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Siori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? Oh my god. Why is there no music? Is there supposed to be or is my like game broken? I don't know. I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez! You don't know the full story at all, so you won't understand. Don't worry! I probably know a lot more than you think! Uh. Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice! Yeah, sure! I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did! Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously! Yeah, I thought so too! I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Siori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. What the f- Oh, what the- What the fuck is this? Oh my god, um... Sayori? Is there more? Um... Get out of my head, get out of my head, ba 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 get out of my head- Oh my god, holy shit. You're gonna read this? Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Who's she? What? Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished until it uh, t just stops moving. Okay. What the fuck is this? Um, I, I don't feel sad. She comes in and kills everyone in the classroom. <laughs> uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Mommy? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything Siori's written. But more than that, 
I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Siori, so. Uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Oh God, don't strain yourself. I Every time I talk, I, I'm straining myself, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> Monica calls that out after me. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Siori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Siori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori! I don't, this just doesn't- something's gonna happen, bro, I don't- I don't know, this is gonna happen soon and it has to it, I don't want- I don't know, I don't know when. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Siori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy! <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> fucking retard, you gotta fucking open the door, bitch! What an asshole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. So what the fu- what the fu- um... Sorry? <laughs> Why did they play the music now? Uh... What? Wait, what the fuck just happened? What the fuck is this? What the hell? What the, what the hell? Like, what is going on? Is this a nightmare? It has to be! This isn't real. That's not why this could be real. Sari wouldn't do that. Yeah, Sari wouldn't do this. She's- what the fuck? What- what the fuck, game? Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? Also, I- I'm gonna save because... If I don't, I feel something even worse is gonna happen. I don't know though. <laughs> How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. What the fuck? What should I have done? F I- I should have teleported. <laughs> If I wasn't there on that day, then I- I don't know. That's not what Siori needed at all. I don't know what she- I, I don't know. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel worse? Now I feel like an asshole. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spend more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And now, I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers, but I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Ne never. Hello? Are you okay? Oh, never. Oh. Eh. Is that actually- What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Um, guys, guys, are you all, are you all okay? Um, what is this? I don't. What is that? 
What the fuck? Why is the music all fucked up? I- <laughs> What? I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw herself. That girl is a good thing I'm like, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let catch up to me. What the fuck is going on? I think that I think that this is um I thought my game just crashed. It's <laughs> what is going on? It's an ordinary school day like any other. Oh yeah, just every morning I wake up to unrara and doing that. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Wait a second, oh my god, she doesn't exist anymore? Wait, what's going on? But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. What? Wait... There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs! There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to deal want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Mommy? Oh, <laughs> Monica! Oh my goodness! I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah, uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Ah, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one! A literature club. Oh god. Literature? That sounds kind of... dull? How many members do you have so far? Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. Uh, besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Oh my god, women? Oh my god, I need to join the- <laughs> Hmm. Hey, mommy. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but- In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? A favor? <laughs> what? I don't know how to speak English. I won't ask you to join, but if you could be at, at, at least, very least, if you, <laughs> Monica's having such a hard time today. If you could at least, at the very, <laughs> if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Imagine if someone just stares at you and just says that. 
<laughs> Please! Um... <laughs> well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, that would be awesome. And you're really sweet, Mommy, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! Monica, what the fuck with Monica? Uh, what? Dude, you're- um... I'm gonna say if I can. What the fuck? Where did my shit go? Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know what's going on! <laughs> And I brought a guest with me! Uh, uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere! Don't be mean, that's okay. But anyway, welcome to the club, mommy! When did I say I would join? All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? Not yet. I mean, no, I'm not. Natsuki? The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year or a kindergartner, but I can't tell. <laughs> I mean, she acts like, I mean, she sounds like, oh shit. I mean, what? Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual and annoying. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Mommy in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I wasn't going to, well, <laughs> you know. Sorry, sorry, I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, mommy? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone! I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet! It must be hard to start a new club! You could put it that way! Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new! Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature! You have to work hard to convince people you're fun, you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I mean, I guess. Ah, <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy the tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Mommy, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga! I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. 
It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change! What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her in her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once! I remember that one time that I did that! <laughs> what the fuck? I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri probably thinks I'm dumb. I mean, might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Ah, uh, I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ah, uh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind! That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Natsuki... Oh, <clears throat> Natsuki, you write your own poems. Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? Uh, no! Natsuki adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like that anyway. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing them even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? No way. Oh my god. Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea! How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own! Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> that way, everyone is even! Um! Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, mommy? Hold on, there's still one problem. Uh, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this damn club! Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and um... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm! Uh... The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Mommy. The thing is, we don't have enough memories yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been really, really, I've been having a really hard time trying to find new members. 
And if we don't find one before the festival? I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right! Okay! I've decided that I'll join the literature club! One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness! Really? Do you really mean that, Mommy? Yeah! It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed! Mommy, I'm so happy! We can become an official club now! Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? I will show you a great time, baby. I love you. <laughs> uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Mommy, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself! Ah! Uh, yeah! Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then! Okay! I'll see you tomorrow then! I can't wait! With that, I depart the club room and teleport to my house. The whole way, my, mon my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright! <sighs> I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Uh, you have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? I mean, I guess. What the fuck is this? Oh god, what? No, what is this shit? What is this shit? I, uh, what the fuck? Um, today I cut my skin open for the first time. It was exhilarating. I think I understand how blank feels now. I'm supposed to be the responsible one, though, so I don't think I'll be doing it again unless I decide to, um, I, I left a memento of the occasion below? Dude, this is probably, this probably goes back to Yuri. I think this is definitely Yuri's, because there was a one time, you know, when, like, we were in my room and she, like, you know, she pulled her sleeve down. I know that's what it is. I just figured out the whole game myself. Wait, why is Monica not here? Fuck that bitch, I don't care about her. <laughs> I don't know. Welcome back to randomly get clicking stuff, guys. Randomly clicking, guys. Guys. <laughs> There's someone here who went and actually tried this, but I, I guess I don't fucking care. <laughs> um... Okay! Hi again, mommy! Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna save again. <laughs> Something, something's gonna go wrong. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Um, Yuri? Uh, your face? Are you looking? Are you... Okay, you're okay now? Okay. Thanks for keeping your promise, Mommy. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. What the fuck? Oh, come on! Like, he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan just to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Um, Monica, you're in the fucking way. How am I supposed to read? Natsuki, something certainly have a bit- You certainly have a big mouth as someone who keeps a manga collection in the club room. 
Uh, I can't. Monica, get the fuck out of here! Stupid fuck. God damn. Atsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, mommy. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a dis disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. What? Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Um, if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt that, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted to. That this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you! I will definitely read this! I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already bur buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. What is she doing in the closet? What are you guys lo like, what is in there? There's a fucking chair and some books. God, what are you guys doing in the fucking- get out of the fucking closet, there's nothing in there! <laughs> like, what else is in that closet?! God damn! They've got a portal to another dimension in there. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cumber of her book. It looks like the same book she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, uh, crap! I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face even deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's the story about, anyway? Well, mm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. Oh yeah, and that's relatable? Is that what she said? She did not say that was relatable, right? One second. Hold up. Relatable? How the fuck is it relatable? <laughs> I don't know. You know how that always happens, silly goose, you know, you, come on, so relatable. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. Oh, so, so relatable. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Um, okay. Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Uh, not the thing with the limbs. That's kind of, um, uh, that's kind of dark, isn't it? I mean, that's like, that's, that's a very, like, it, 
I don't know, but uh, I would explain it much. I, I don't know. Just ignore it. Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. It's relatable, I promise. Ah, uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, mommy? No, it's it's not that. I mean, I, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories. So don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story, it's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. I don't know what fucking perspective that is, but okay. What horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless. Well, anyway, well, um, then suddenly, uh, um, okay. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incre- uh, Oh, okay. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying it something strange. And please stop me if I stop t or start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Oh god, that... <laughs> that noise actually kind of scared me. <laughs> the fuck, I was not expecting that. Oh my god. What is this fucking shit? Y yes. I mean, you didn't have to, but... Uh, uh, what are you trying to say? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence older over my shoulder as I read. Fuck, I keep clicking on that. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comfortable. I mean comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just bathing in the feeling of your bot. What? What? Does it, sh does it show you what she said? Oh, no, it actually, does. <laughs> it actually doesn't. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Ah! Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly, clo timidly closes her own copy. Once we- I <laughs> I'm glitching just like the game! <laughs> Me and the game have become one! <laughs> Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right arm to hold the book open. I guess that makes it a kind of difficult to turn the page! Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah! I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to, her, to its side- I, I don't know what it's at. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? <clears throat> to turn the page. Ah, uh, sorry! I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, oh. uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. 
Y yeah Thanks! We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. Volition? I don't know. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the paper, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri! This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, no, I don't relate to this character at all. It, definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry, I, I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? N never mind. We, you, we didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling all right? Uh, Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. All right, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Mommy? Did something happen just now? Eh, I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I don't give a fuck. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. No, no, nothing. Uh, don't worry, I believe you, Sully. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our palms with each other? Uh, shouldn't we wait for- uh, Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Who should I tell my perm to first? Oh my god! Fine, Natsuki. God damn it. You'll be first for once. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. Oh, I did? Well, I fucking lied. <laughs> it's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. God, this is dog shit. That's what she was gonna say. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. But excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Ha! Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race. Oh my god, it's the same fucking shit. God, it's the same fucking bullshit as last time. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. Why? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of... Poems for people to express themselves. Your writing style won't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like what it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about writing simple is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then it, made, it fell flat on purpose. And I was bringing out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is. But if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't... My my mouse and keyboard just disconnected. That was fucking weird. Okay. Um, was that part of the game? 
Is that part of the game? I don't know. Okay, Monica. Hi, mommy. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new at everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, mommy. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know, but it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, mommy. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical, and I'm a liar. I mean, I'm not really sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. That's why it counts when I save the game. God damn, every time I see her, I just save the game. There's something going on with her. Ah, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing though, but sometimes I get the impression that she's totally giving up on people. The fuck is my shit doing? Is this part of the game? <laughs> I don't think it is. She spends so much time in her own head, that's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly, like earlier. I think if she gets too simulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our palms with each other. Uh, already? I I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize! We, we still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad than did you took the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall, but he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings, but my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling plays tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I, dis I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right here. He's right here. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. This isn't the one that she wrote last time, was it? I don't I don't think so. So what do you think? <clears throat> it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh -huh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other? Anyway! Here's Monica's writing tip of the day! Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a certain point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just keep move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Who should I sell my pump to next? Oh my god. 
the only person that that is there to show my poem to. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? D did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I, uh, he's going to hate me. What does that mean? I, I, can I read her thoughts? I don't know. Like, what the fuck's the parentheses for? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh, that's, I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Uh, Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their own style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but to getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Bias how? Um, well, never mind. I, I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. She probably wrote some fucked up shit, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghosts under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate between the air beneath the amber girl. I think it. Li this is literally her poem from last time! You guys didn't even write new poems! <laughs> even in a totally different reality without Sayori, you guys still write the same fucking shit! God damn it! <laughs> I expected better! I'm scared. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, lady, I just threw it back at you. <laughs> I just, I, okay. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. Uh, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It, it wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I, I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in a ghost, Yuri? Who? who? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Mommy. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But I remember that poets often express their own thoughts feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of this poem is the on be only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of it that way. That's impressive. <sighs> it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. Y you think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Mommy. Uh, me too. 
Phew, god damn it, that was a lot. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. I might have to save. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Uh, um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing! Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy! Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up! How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who I act who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Mommy did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and mommy liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realize you two were so- you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I- Uh, you, you're just- Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that mommy appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he appreciated my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Oh! Uh, well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boots magically grew a size bigger as soon as mommy started showing up. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... THIS DOESN'T INVOLVE YOU! Taking your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking. You wanna be edgy, bitch? Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for some of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point! Most people learn to get over themselves when they graduate high school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Well, be careful, you might cut yourself on the edge, Yuri! Oh my bad, you already do, don't you? D did you just accuse me of cutting myself? Oh my god, what is this? What? Did I click on something? Oh, I actually- that, I might want to say- <laughs> <laughs> I thought it booted me out. What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on! Let mommy hear everything you really think! I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this! Uh -huh. Suddenly Yuri turns toward me as if she just noticed I was standing here. Mommy, she she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true! She started it! How did I, uh, whoever I agree with... Uh, I don't know! Why are you asking? <laughs> who's- who's right? I don't know, I did I didn't- uh, But I mean, she was being a bitch and I don't like her, so <laughs> I don't know, I- that- that- that's not the right- Um Uh Uh <laughs> Um, hello? Oh, Monica! Okay, that- those lips Um I don't feel safe. Monica, can you please get out of the way? <laughs> hey, mommy. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Okay. 
All right, well, guys, we're going to leave it off here. Anyways, guys, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out. Hope you guys all have a great day today.